Okay. Hi everyone. How's everybody? Is everybody doing good today? I hope. <laughs> you know it's a hot one outside. <laughs> um, welcome to um, Bike and Pedestrian Safety with um, our friends from AAA, Cassidy and Joanna. Um, I wanted to thank you for doing the program, and um, I'll let you. I guess I'll let you get started if that's okay. Or, yeah, also. absolutely. Thank All you right, for having great. us. Thank you. Joanna's going to pull up the uh, presentation and get started. We just want to say thank you for having us and thanks for joining on today. Um, so we're going to get kick it off with bike and pedestrian safety. Um, so I'll kind of touch on most of the bike stuff um, and we'll show some of the things that we have. Like I have my handy dandy um, bike helmet here. So we'll talk about that and proper wear. Um, but yeah, so first off, I wanted to talk about kind of some safe places to ride and probably um, you guys have been on some of these places before. Um, but when we think of some safe places, we think our neighborhoods, um, especially if they're not busy, if there's not a lot of cars, we think our neighborhoods. Um, but some other places that you should know about are um, bike lanes or bike paths. Now bike paths are kind of great if you're going on a family like ride. Um, you know, and you kind of want to do a little, like maybe challenge yourself a little bit because um, they can be a little bit longer. Or maybe you just want to do half. So those are great options, especially if you're going with a group. Um, bike lanes are more for like hardcore bike riders. Um, it's something I probably wouldn't recommend for the kiddos. Um, but, you know, it's still a good place for us to be aware of and know, especially if say you're with your kids in the car. It's nice to kind of point that out and you know mention that that's where bikes will go um, if they're on the road. Now when we were thinking of your community we definitely thought of the Situate Reservoir ride um, and I know that one's pretty long from what I from my research I haven't been on it yet I hope to I just got a bike this year so I'm super excited but um, that's another place so like maybe that's uh, you know, a place that you could check out maybe the summer or even the fall when it's a little cooler. I know it's hard to kind of bike when it's super, super hot outside, but that's a really neat place that maybe you guys could check out, um, you know, and maybe just start with a little portion of it. I think, especially if you're going like as a family, um, I would start with just a little chunk because <laughs> it can be kind of long um, and like kind of just go as far as you're comfortable and see the sites, take some pictures because um, that's a super great and awesome place for you guys to go biking. Now, when we're thinking of um, some other things as well, some other safety tips that we should really know, because that's a AAA, we're all about safety. Like we talk a lot about trans transportation, but we're all about safety. And one of the things you should know is that there's actually a proper um, way to fit your bike to yourself. Um, and this is something I get a lot of questions about this pretty often. And, you know, how do we know our bikes are the right sizes? You know, even for me, when I went into the bike shop and bought my bought my bike recently, um, you know, I had a really great conversation with the bike shop owner about this. So basically, our two tips for bike fit is that the rider should be able to sit on the seat with both feet, you know, just touching the ground. They shouldn't, like kiddos shouldn't be on their tippy tippy toes, um, but their feet shouldn't be like 100% necessarily flat. Um, you know, like it's, just, you know, kind of a comfortable, like little bit of like tip, you know, um, you know, of the feet on the ground. So that's kind of a nice height, especially for, um, you know, if we're adjusting the seat, um, that's something that you should know about proper fit. And then also, if the seat is in the lowest position and you can't touch both feet to the ground, the bike is probably just too big. And I know, especially if sometimes, like I had big siblings. So my sister is seven years older than me and my brother is 10 years older than me. So eventually I kind of got a hand-me-down bike. But when I started on that bike from my sister, she was a lot bigger and honestly, I didn't fit that bike well. Um, so just keep that in mind, especially if you have hand-me-down bikes in your family like mine did. Um, it's always good to just, you know, go a little bit smaller instead of a little bit bigger. Um, you know, make sure that you can fit on that bike uh, well before you start transitioning to it. Now, another thing, I know I mentioned this before, but bike helmets. We have three tests, okay? Three tests to make sure that this bike helmet fits per, uh, correctly. And I don't know if you knew this, but I think when we think bike helmets, we think, wow, it protects our heads, which is true, you know, so we don't get a bump or anything like that. 
But ultimately, did you know that your bike helmet protects your brain? And let me tell you, your brains are so, 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 so important, right? We need them to think, we need them to do all of these uh, like important things in our lives. And you know, say you fall off your bike and you get a scrape or something like that. I mean, mom or dad can stick a Band-Aid on it. That's pretty easy. But if you get a boo-boo on your brain, ooh, that's really hard for a doctor to fix or a surgeon. It's just hard. So that's why we wear our bike helmets. And I'm gonna try and put mine on. I, I tried to do it uh, the fit and I'm still getting used to it because it's a little bit new. But basically, we have three tests, okay? And Cassidy's gonna do them too, okay? Um, so three tests to make sure that our bike helmets are on correctly. The first one is the eyebrow test. And feel free to repeat that at home, eyebrow test, okay? So we think of our eyebrows. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two fingers, two fingers, and just make sure that there's two fingers of space between your eyebrow and the tip of your helmet. I don't like that, okay? So if my helmet's like way back here, doesn't pass the eyebrow test. And ultimately, what's it not protecting? It's not protecting the front of my head. Oh, that's not good, okay? So two fingers, two fingers of space, and that's perfect. Now, the next one is the peace sign test, okay? And you're gonna hold up two peace signs, one in each hand. And these peace signs go on either side of our ears. We actually have straps, see? I have straps that come down on either side of my ear. And that's pretty cool, all right? And we, we just wanna make sure, like say my, my straps are twisted like this. Well, they're not gonna be lying flat and we really want them to be flat. Um, you know, we want them to be nice and flat against our heads, okay? Now the last one where I'm gonna clip my bike helmet in, okay? The last one is the chin strap test. Okay, feel free to repeat that at home, chin strap test. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take one finger, just one, and I should be able to fit, you know, a finger between my chin and the chin strap. If it's too tight like this, and I can't even really open my mouth very well, ugh, that's not great. Um, but if I could fit like, like three fingers or four fingers, if my chin strap is like down to here, that is just too loose, okay? We want it to be snug, but not too tight, okay? So um, that's always a good one. Uh, it's good to adjust that, okay, just in case. So I'm gonna take this off. One other cool thing, I don't know if you knew this, but my bike helmet has this nifty little light on the back. Isn't that cool? Um, I just, I thought that was really neat. So this is a great thing to kind of segue into one of our points, which is visibility. I don't know if that's next, but I'm going to skip ahead to it and I'll come back to hand signals. So visibility is super important. And I don't know, that's kind of a big word when we're talking about it, but basically it just means able to be seen. Because think about it, where you're, where you're riding your bike, it's normally around your neighborhood or maybe, you know, um, you know, maybe somewhere else like a park or something like that. But if you think about who's around you, a lot of people are driving in their cars. They're driving in their trucks or their minivans. And honestly, when you're riding on your bike, you look about this small, this small to somebody who's in their car. So you wanna do everything you can to make yourself stand out. And you know what I do? I wear super bright colors like this. And I know Cassidy has a really cool reflective vest. Um, so now you don't have to have a reflective vest at home. Um, it's great. And I would definitely suggest it, especially if you're, if you're riding around a place that you know has a ton of cars. Um, but you could just wear a t-shirt like this. Like this is just one of my t-shirts that's a bright color and it doesn't have to be yellow. It could be bright green. It could be bright orange. It could be bright blue, but you want really eye catching colors. If you're wearing clothes like that are black or gray, it's not very easy to notice you. So wear nice, super bright colors. And I love that as well. So like there's a bike light as well. Um, I think that's a fabulous thing and making sure that your bike has reflectors on it. Cassidy has a reflector um, at her home. That's one of our reflectors at AAA. So that's a great thing. You could clip it on your clothes. You can clip it on your bike. And again, it just helps you stand out more, kind of like even the back of my bike helmet, that light. It's just super great to have to help you stand out and for people who are driving around to notice you. Um, now, one thing I didn't mention, and this I think is important, but it might take some practice, okay? Um, I think it's always a good idea to practice these things before you even get on the bike. 
Now, when somebody's in their car, say somebody's driving behind you and you have to turn with your bike, um, you know, and that person in the car, they're not going to know what you're going to do unless you use some hand signals. Hand signals are a great way to communicate with people who can't hear you. Like, think about it. And if you're on your bike and somebody's in your car, if you yell at them, are they really going to hear you that well? No, they're not. So you can actually make a signal with your hand. Um, so basically, if you're on your bike, you know, you have two hands on your wheel most of the time. Okay, well, most of the time on the handlebars, excuse me. So when you're doing a left turn, you can just, you know, stick your hand off. I know it's hard to see on the Zoom screen, but you stick your hand off straight to the right, kind of like what that guy's doing, uh, or straight to the left, excuse me. Um, and it's almost like pointing. Think about it. You point almost in the direction you want to go. Or if you're taking a right turn, you can kind of put your hand up like that, okay? Or you can point to the right. Just kind of point in the direction you want to go. That's always a good one. Now, say you have to slow down or stop, all right? It's kind of like this, okay? Now, obviously, I'm still holding onto my handlebars, but that's a great way to kind of communicate with somebody who might not be able to hear you because they're in their car. But you want to kind of let them know what you're doing, okay? So that's a really good way. Now, I think that's pretty much it for me, except I wanted to talk about like one more thing because I think this is pretty important, especially in the summer, okay? Now, I will tell you, I love in the summer to wear my sandals, all right? These are my Birkenstocks. They are great. I love them. They are awesome shoes. Not so great for when you're biking, okay? Not so great. And the reason is because oftentimes like the straps could come off. Um, if you have flip-flops on, like I love the flip-flops, but you know, they can break really easily or they can get caught in the wheel. So it's always good to just wear a pair of like sneakers or really flat shoes. Um, Converse's are great options, um, but those are kind of safer shoes to wear than our sandals, okay? Um, just remember, and even I would say like, make sure that you're wearing pretty nice fitting clothes. You don't want anything too baggy or like, I know when I was little, I tried to ride my bike with a, a long dress on. Does that sound like a smart idea? No. <laughs> no, it was a really silly idea. But I tried and it really didn't work because those aren't, those just aren't comfy clothes to wear when you're on a bike. So make sure you're in nice, comfy clothes, not too, too baggy, no dresses, um, and wear some nice shoes like sneakers or whatever. So that's it for me. I'm going to turn it over to Cassidy and she's going to focus more about when we're walking around, what we should be kind of aware of in our environment. Awesome. Thank you, Joanna. And we will do, we'll save time at the end for any questions. Um, so if you have any questions about bike, we can answer that right after. But we're going to start talking about pedestrian safety, okay? And what is a pedestrian, right? It's someone who's walking around. So we're going to talk about um, some safety tips. Now, pedestrian 101. So what are the benefits of walking, right? Um, what are some of the dangers pedestrians face? We'll talk about that. What risky behaviors can cause incidents? What are some of the consequences of taking those risks? And what can we do to walk safer? So those are some of the things we're gonna answer. Now we'll talk about why it's important to walk, right? It, it helps maintain a healthy weight, right? It improves your mood, improves your balance and coordination. Um, especially right now, I feel like I've appreciated walking so much more. A lot of you, I'm sure, have been, you know, maybe your mom, dad, um, or even your grandparents or anyone's working from home, and they're kind of home a lot all day, every day, and getting out for that walk has been so nice. I know that's helped me, um, especially if any of you have dogs like I do, um, and if you really want, maybe we can get them on the screen later today if you want to see the dogs, but um, we've been walking every day um, almost, right? really helps improve your mood. It gets you out of the house. It's so nice, especially to go around the neighborhood. But with that, we have to do it safely because um, there are a lot of risks to pedestrians as well. And because just like bike, um, you know, cyclists, they're on the roads with other cars and other people and trucks and buses, just like a pedestrian who's on foot is at danger because they are sharing, you know, in, unless you're on your, you know, quiet street or sidewalk, which we'll talk about, we're sharing the road as well with people on bikes and cars and trucks and buses. So it's super important to stay safe, all right? So is it safe to walk? Traffic incidents around uh, account for a significant number of pedestrian 
um, injuries, which we'll talk about how to, how to avoid those injuries, okay? And when walking, pedestrians should be attentive to their surroundings. So we're gonna really talk about distracted walking and all those things. So we do have some, some information up here from the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. So NHTSA is one of our um, you know, big partners that we get a lot of our data and information from there, the uh, Traffic Safety Administration. And we have some stats there. So any, any parents listening who wanna just take a look at this, you know, 76% of all fatalities occurred in urban areas. 74% um, of all fatalities occurred in, in the dark. These are pedestrian fatalities, by the way, sorry. And 72% of all fatalities occurred at non-intersections and 70% of all fatalities were male. So just some, some stats that are only um, a couple of years um, old. So pretty current stats um, really relating to some of the key issues of pedestrians. So these things here on your screen, how could these impact your walk? I'm sure you might be looking at the hoodie and thinking, what could that have to do with going for a walk? Um, the cell phone, you might have a clue, and the headphones, you might have a clue, but you're probably like, I listen to music all the time when I go for a walk, so we'll talk about it. The sweatshirt, right? When your hood is up, it kind of cuts off your peripheral vision, which causes a hazard to when we're walking. So it's really important to just, if you have the hood, because it's super cold or something, have it a little bit further back on your head where it's not gonna kind of cover the sides of your eyes. Um, it's super important to use your peripheral vision when you're walking to pick up any hazards of maybe cars um, or anything on the sides of you. Um, and the best way to avoid a hazard is to notice it first, right? Before it becomes closer to you. So we wanna pick up on those things before they become an issue. Um, and then, the cell phone, just as distracting as it would be for a driver, it is just as distracting for a pedestrian. If we're walking and we have our head down, we've seen some pretty crazy stuff where people have fallen into like the sewage, like the sewage shafts, because they're just walking right on their cell phone. They don't even see the hazards on the sidewalks or on the roads, or they bump into one another, or they don't notice a crosswalk or kind of, um, an intersection and they start to walk right into one. So it's really important that we keep our head up and we stay alert. We need to be paying attention to everything around us when we're walking. And the headphones, they could be a huge hazard when we're walking because we won't be able to hear the traffic around us. We wanna be able to hear any kind of traffic or any kind of hazards that, or you know, maybe even an ambulance or something that could be coming around us while, while we're walking that could affect us and if we need to move over or things like that. So a lot of people say to me that they love to listen to music when they walk, it's their favorite thing. So what we suggest um, is no music, at, no headphones at all, but if you're going to, to, keep the volume pretty low and just keep one earbud in. Um, and make sure the earbud that's out is the one that's closest to the traffic. So if, you know, if this ear is closest to the traffic, then that's the one that doesn't have an earbud. So it's nice to just, if you're going to, just kind of keep the volume on a little low and just keep one of those earbuds in instead of both, okay? So it's so important to be cautious. One thing that's really important is pay attention to the sidewalks, right? We have sidewalks everywhere, um, not everywhere, but in most places, and those are made for us. But what happens when we don't have a sidewalk, right? Um, we wanna walk on the left side of the road. Um, and the best way to just remember this is where you kind of want the, you wanna be facing the traffic. You wanna be able to see the traffic coming towards you. You don't wanna be in a situation where the traffic is sneaking up behind you. Um, so we always suggest, you know, walk on the sidewalk. If it's not available, walk on the left side of the road. Um, the good rule to never forget, of course, when you're crossing is to look left, right, and left again. You know, you're checking to make sure if any cars, trucks, or buses are, are over there, you're gonna check the other side, and then you're gonna check one more time to see if they snuck up um, when you went to go check the right side, okay? And some safe places to cross, we all know the crosswalk, right? And Miss Joanna has the sign up for a crosswalk. That sign indicates that there is a crosswalk. Now it's so important to know this. Yes, cars and people in cars and trucks and buses are supposed to stop for you to let you through the crosswalk. But we can't trust that everyone's gonna make the right decision. So it's so important to still just stop and wait and make sure. And the good thing we like to suggest is kind of that communication, we're big on communication. It's kind of that Rhode Island wave. Maybe the driver who slows down or stops near the crosswalk, just give them that wave, make that eye, you know, eye connection with that driver. So you're acknowledging that that driver sees you and you see that driver. Um, communication is huge, right? So 
if there's no crosswalk and we need to cross the street, um, a couple safe places to remember are the corner of the street. Um, and we say that because we don't want to ever cross in the middle a middle of the street. We kind of want to get to the end where there's a corner or there's a stop sign um, and we can kind of make the best decision. And Miss Joanna has a stop sign right there. Um, those stop signs kind of like at the end of the road, those are, those are safer places to help us cross. We don't ever want to kind of just go off in the middle of the road. And when we are crossing, um, it's so important to never, uh, actually in this picture is a good example. Do we see all the cars kind of lined up on the side of the road? It's important to never cross the street in between parked cars. So if you're on, if you're in that situation where you want to cross, you would want to come all the way up to the, that end of that street where the cars aren't anymore, and then you can make the decision to cross. Because if you sneak out in between two parked cars, it makes it very difficult for any people, any motorist to to spot you. Um, you kind of end up being hidden between the parked cars. Um, so we want to make sure we're not crossing between park, parked cars. All right, and just like we talked about um, being visible on bikes, it's so important for a pedestrian to be visible. Because like Joanna said, when you're walking or you're biking, you look about this small to someone who's in a car further away from you. So we talked about the bright colors, right? And if you don't have reflective gear, um, just, you know, super bright sweatshirts, super bright shirts. Um, we, there's also uh, reflective tape. You could just buy a roll of reflective tape and tape it to any of your stuff. Um, making sure we stay away from dark colors, dark sweatshirts. Um, but what we want to point out too is a flashlight, right? Um, if that the flashlight is a little bit more difficult to have when you're on your bike, but if you're walking around, you have that flight flashlight. It's an easy way to kind of brighten up your path, your own path for yourself, but also it makes you stand out a little bit more. So you want to be seen and be able to see. Those are two really important things. Be seen and be able to see. Those are super important. All right, so, and when we're walking, we need to be predictable, right? We wanna walk on the sidewalk, um, that's important. If there is one there for you, use it. It's the best place for you to walk. It's made just for us. Um, make eye contact with the driver, it's so important. Have that communication. And it's easier to do that if we're not distracted, right? If we have our heads up while we're walking and we're alert, um, it'll be easier to make that kind of communication with all the drivers. We want to obey the crossing signals. Um, so those traffic lights, and that's actually, Joanna has a sign for a traffic light, right? Yeah. Um, so those traffic lights are actually another safe place to cross if there's no crosswalk. Because um, those, those traffic lights, you typically have buttons that you could press and it will tell you just like how she's holding up there, it'll tell you, yes, it's okay to walk by that, that little walking stick figure or the hand saying, no, it's not okay to walk. So traffic lights are another safe place to cross um, and a bit, definitely obey those, um, especially if we see a lot of people walking around now more. And I've noticed a few people who um, in my, you know, in my neighborhoods, I've noticed where the, that signal is telling them that they can't walk anymore, but they try to go because it looks clear right there, but not noticing that there's a turn lane coming. So just because this person, you know, has to stop and you think you could go straight across, it, it's telling you no for a reason, right? Because there's someone, they're letting someone else go as, as a turn lane. So it's really important to obey those traffic signals and signs, they're, they're there for a reason. Um, and don't cross between parked cars. That's, that's super important too. We wanna be visible. We don't wanna be hidden at all. Being alert, um, no, no distracted walking. We don't wanna see anything crazy. You know, I've seen videos of people walking with their heads down on their cell phones and falling right into things and tripping over hazards or, you know, we don't want any injuries, especially right now. I definitely is not a good time to go to the hospital, I'm sure. Um, so we want to we want to stay safe. Okay, so things that you can do, um, you can talk to local law enforcement about pedestrian dangers in your own community. Um, we talk to a lot of kids in schools and, you know, a lot of kids who walk or bike often with their friends and they notice things, right? You guys could be good advocates for your community. Can notice that oh there's there's a stop sign that's fallen down in you know in such and such a neighborhood pointing that out could really help and, and save someone so picking up on those things and being good advocates for your community is super helpful and awesome um, talk to the leaders at your school about what you can do to encourage safe walking habits um, you can definitely do that with with you know your 
your peers at school. I know we haven't been in, in session for a little bit, but maybe in the fall, if we go back and you kind of notice things, you know, during bus drop off or bus pickup that could be hazardous. Um, AAA actually has a nice program that goes with a lot of schools. It's called um, AAA School Safety Patrol. I don't know if your school has it or if you've heard of it, but you can even tell your teachers about it in the fall if you, if you don't have it. But we have a nice program where schools can elect, you know, leaders to be safety patrollers. Kind of, they have a lot of different duties and they have a nice badge and a sash and they'll kind of help with all those kind of things like the school bus pickup zone, hallway duty and all that kind of stuff. So being leaders at your school. All right, and talk to your family about what you can do. These are important, right? Because Joanna and I go to a lot of schools. We talk to a lot of kids and we've even heard kids who say, you know, oh, I don't have to wear my bike helmet. But you could be the child that speaks up and says, you know, to your family members or in your household, no, I do want to wear my bike helmet. It's super important. And I think my siblings should do it too. Um, go ahead, talk to your family about what you know um, and, the, and the knowledge you learn. Super important. All right. And lastly, we just want to remind everyone to walk safely. Um, it's a great thing to do. I love doing it every day with my dogs. If you have dogs, you know, shorter leashes are, are always better when you're walking. Harnesses are always better than the collars. You have way, way more control, you know, and always make sure you have that leash wrapped around your wrist a couple times and holding on just in case it slips. So it's awesome. It's an awesome thing to do. So we encourage you to do it. Just do it safely. So do we have any questions at all? Whether it's for Joanna or myself? No. <laughs> Okay, well, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for signing on today. Um, we love going and doing these programs. So now that we do them virtually, we, we want to, you know, do them as much as we can. So thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming. That was very, very informative. That was a great program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everybody's safe, which is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially the summer coming. <laughs> yeah, I well, know. I think some of those things too, like, um, I don't know if anybody out there who's listening has a scooter too, or maybe a skateboard or a rollerblade. A lot of those bike safety tips apply to when you're on your scooter. Um, I know those are like really popular in my neighborhood. A lot of kids have them. So, you know, all of those safety tips kind of apply to other situations too. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll let you go enjoy the heat. <laughs> uh, Did you I have know. a quick have question? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you're so you. welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. Do you have a cool bike helmet at home? I have a unicorn one, but I'm... Oh, I was going to ask if it was going to be a unicorn one. That's the most popular one I see right now. I love it. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a new one because it's kind of tight. Kind of oh, tight. Yeah, it's a little yeah. small. Yeah, you can get another one. They're mm -hmm. really cool ones, but I like the unicorn. <laughs> I do, too. Oh, that's really one cool. of my favorites. Mm -hmm. right. That one can be seen. Yes, I can. That one stands out and I like it. It does. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Bye. Take Have a good day. Care.